meeting uh, January 9th at 7.02. Happy New Year, 2018. I'd like to have a motion to call the meeting to order. So moved. So moved by Mr. Harris. Second. Second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, any walk-ins this evening? Ms. Ball? Come on up. You know the drill, just name and address for the yeah, name? Yeah, sure. David Ball, Rebecca Road. Good evening. Good evening. I just want to come in and, and, and speak just for a minute about how impressed I was with the way the town responded to the, to the storm last Thursday. I'm not Thank going to you. take much of your time, but I, I thought it was important from my perspective anyway. I'm not speaking for whole neighborhoods, but I think I can speak for my own. Uh, I was very pleased and impressed how the town dealt with the storm last Thursday. The day before the storm, Fire Chief John Murphy called me and told me he would be sending out timely storm alerts. I assured him that we would get them out uh, through the Situa Coastal Coalition, so those went out, uh, should have gone out to about 2,000 people. Um, Kevin Cavity and Jim Boudreau, who I just met uh, that morning, uh, they were driving around checking things out. Uh, I was impressed with Mr. Boudreau's the very quick interview, you know, the very quick time I had speaking to him. The messages sent out by the town were very timely and informative. I was impressed by how Chief Murphy planned for and then handled the, the situation. I was impressed by how DPW prepared for the storm, and I was impressed with the town and private plow snow operators. One of my concerns before the storm was that people decided to leave. They needed to get back to their property as soon as possible. Crews worked all night opening up roads to make that happen. I know the fire chief and police chief coordinated that. From what I could see, everybody had their shutter systems in place, and that resulted in less structural damage. The one concern I have is that this tide was somewhat comparable to the height of the tide in 1978, but the two storms are not comparable in terms of the power of the blizzard of 78. In, in 78, the waves were over 30 feet right offshore. In this storm, they were maybe 15 to 17 feet, and it was only a one tide event as opposed to a two or three tide cycle for 1978. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I was really impressed. I want to thank everybody for everything they did. Well, Dave, we appreciate very you nice. coming in. That's very nice of you to take the time to commend them. No, I, I thought it was they important. They did do a great job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Have a good meeting. Thanks, Dave. Yep. You too, Dave. Have a good night. Thanks. So I should have welcomed our new town administrator first before I did walk in, so I apologize. It's okay. Uh, so <laughs> New Year 2018, we welcome Jim Boudreau. Jim, welcome. Thank you. We're happy to have you start. Glad to be here. Great. And uh, I think you, you, know, you were baptized, baptized by fire the past week. Um, so we'll move right to the report of the town administrator. I'll be very brief for my first one. Um, interesting first four days. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of people calling me and said you started on Tuesday and by Wednesday you're taking a six-inch snowstorm made it a blizzard. <laughs> um, but uh, very impressed by the work that was done by the DPW, the police fire, all the responders, uh, the snow cleanup went very well. Uh, as we spoke last week, it was about what we expected, maybe a little worse flooding than we expected. Uh, but Kevin's crew did an outstanding job getting everything cleaned up. Police and fire were fantastic. Uh, tomorrow, um, if you see us down the seawall, we actually have the Metro uh, Law Enforcement Council is coming in. They're going to bring in a drone tomorrow, and we're going to fly the seawall on the beach looking for damage. Uh, try something a little bit different. But, um, you know, first lesson I learned was I needed better boots. <laughs> um, to deal with a, a situate storm, so we've taken care of that. Uh, but overall, good first four days, very impressed by the emergency team down there. They did a, a fantastic job, and I just kind of rode along and saw what they were doing. So um, it was good. I enjoyed it. Good. And I, if you don't mind, if I, I'd love to comment, too. They, um, <coughs> they did a terrific job. All, all the department heads, also SANS and the shelter folks, and even the day after. Uh, you know, Jennifer Keefe's office with the health department inspections and the building department going out the day after. It was a busy couple of days for all of you, and um, I was really, really impressed by the cooperation, the coordination, the expediency with the response effort, and um, of course, we would all be remiss not to mention how grateful we all are that Stephen Moen, our harbor master, is safe. Um, it was a little, yeah, little that bit, was a little uh, hairy for a bit. Close bit. call there. So, thank you. I don't know if anybody else want any comments? I was just going to. Where the chief had just walked in, does he might want to just say, I don't know, it's up to you. Um, 
Just kind of for your comments, I think everybody did, did a great job. All the way down from the volunteers, the shelters, to wherever, to uh, everybody knew what they were doing. They got out there and they knew we had to get uh, a quick follow-up to get everything cleaned up before it froze. And, and um, they all executed from the firefighters, police, PPW, dispatchers. Um, everybody had cleaned up after it was upstanding. So again, you know, uh, good execution. It was safe, it was June 1st weekend. Fully supportive of everything we did in there. You know, that's what we needed to do. The base was able to do the job. Um, a lot of trust, <coughs> and that's appreciated. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only thing I'll add is um, all of us spent some time at the EOC during the event and um, the coordination of stuff there and the leadership in there and, and really just the, the ability to have everything in one central area. We had National Grid there. We had the gas company there. Obviously, the fire police, town administrator, DPW. All these people coordinating all the activities from a central space with all the information on the screens above you it was just really spectacular to me. And I thought I was very impressed by putting that that space into use in a, in a real life situation. You know, we've had other meetings there and stuff, but didn't really, didn't really sense that. People coming in and out, communicating well, getting warm and heading back out to the storm. Um, very impressive. I thought, you know, I, I was really uh, also impressed by the, just the amount of knowledge that the people and the, and the workers in this town have. Um, and as, as Chief said, you know, knowing what to do, not really needing all the direction, but having the leadership there to direct them and, and understanding the tides and understanding the community and getting where it had to be. And like Maura mentioned, the sands operation, um, the shelter operation, you know, this, we were prepared for a lot worse and I think we got lucky, though obviously the flooding was bad, but um, the power stayed on and that really made it an event, of, like Dave said, a one-tide event, which was, we were lucky. So thank you all for all, all you do for the town. It's a great investment. <coughs> Absolutely. Yep. Else? And the, the only other thing that hasn't really been mentioned is the the preparation, uh, the days leading up to it. Poor Jim walked in and I, we, I, he's like, "I'm busy. I'm starting ready. I'm getting ready for the storm." And that was, you know, two days before the event. And every department did that so that when it hit, they knew exactly what they needed to be prepared for. And that was that was impressive too. Again, they know what they're doing, Kevin. Chief Murphy, mm -hmm. Chief Stewart, uh, all the departments, these guys know what they're doing. They didn't need me getting in their way. Uh, I was just there to facilitate whatever they needed. And <clears throat> they had a plan. They put it in action. They executed it. Uh, we'll be cleaning up for a while. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've talked to Kevin. He's already expended about $125,000 on this storm. Uh, so the cleanup now will be mostly on straight time with our guys. But uh, we still have some cleanup to do. But the, the critical stuff was done in a very timely manner. The roads were open. The power was restored. <laughs> So, you know, all in all, it could have been a lot worse, uh, and, and the town did a fantastic job responding to it. So, and that EOC makes a big difference to have all those people in one place. All the information comes into the same place. Everybody gets it at the same time, uh, and then they can react to it as a group. So it, it makes a big difference when you have that. It did, and the town should be proud. Um, you know, the head of MEMA was here, and Governor Baker was <coughs> here. Um, they were very impressed with the center and specifically mentioned that the proactive and the preparation that the town had and the operation clearly had a big impact on our response, so they were very impressed too. So our residents should be very proud of all of you. So thank you. Anything else? No, right now we're just trying to have a normal day. <laughs> um, a lot of meetings and uh, hopefully starting tomorrow, Thursday, Nancy and I will be really digging into the budget and, and getting a handle on that and getting that ready for the board. So uh, that's kind of my next okay. priority is to get that on the way. Do we know, how long does it take FEMA to determine whether or not it's this storm will meet federal they want all in reimbursement? They want some information back from us by the 24th. So general basically cost, this is general cost, and then sum it all up with all the communities and see if we actually qualify and then we go to FEMA. Was it declared? It was, the, this is part of the process, so okay. it wasn't that clear, cut and dry. Right. So they're actually reaching out. They, they want information by the 24th of January back from us. They'll make a determination, go to FEMA and ask for it if it reaches a certain, certain threshold. And then after that, FEMA awards it, and then we have to come back. Now you have to diagnose and cross your T's and really get the details okay. down. I don't think the governor declared it an emergency at all, did he, Chief? Sorry? The governor didn't declare an emergency, did he? No, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's now it's a damage threshold for, for FEMA. So it's the, you know, the whole coastline is flooding, where it's typically just a few towns going up around here. So we saw the news everywhere got the highest tides around, 15 foot tides. So um, I have a feeling that's going to bring a lot more damage than, 
that we see right now. So the probability that we'll get a uh, name something uh, um, a storm that gets reimbursed. Yeah. Great. All right. You all set, Jim? All set. Okay, great. We're going to take a, an item out of order um, just because uh, Mr. Kelly has uh, something to attend uh, that takes him out of town. So we're going to take Kevin Kelly out of order, if folks don't mind, um, to discuss and vote the um, da, 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 da. demolition, the demolition of the old police station. I can't even find it. So 730, <laughs> yeah, for the asbestos abatement. Sorry, Kevin. I couldn't even find it in there. That's all right. I knew why you were Thank coming. You. <laughs> So we're here to uh, get a signature and approval for the contract for the demolition and abatement associated with the demolition for the old police station next door. Uh, you have a contract in front of you for $116,000 with Francesco Demolition Company from Duxbury, Massachusetts. It's also a bid sheet attached showing the one, two, three, four, five, six other bidders which supplied. We had nine people show up for the uh, pre-bid and six people supplied bid and uh, we're ready to go just a question sure. Kevin <clears throat> I know we had um, voted so much for abatement so much for demolition was it 100 150 what, and then what is um, out of that we already it, did all the early number for uh, exploratory work for <coughs> to identify all right. the hazardous materials right and that was 20 I think and then okay. everything else was wrapped into the bigger number Okay. So the, the abatement is wrapped into this 116. It is. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. we have uh, voted about, two, uh, about 250. About 250. We for carry that. 250. Yeah. This thing. does not include the money that we need to move the um, servers and the um, electric, um, okay. the, the fiber line from the school, the fiber line to town hall, um, and the electricity associated out to the old sand shed. So that's <coughs> got to be done before the building comes down. Right. right, we're in the middle of doing it now. Oh, all right. right. It looks like he's ready to do it tomorrow. Yeah, well, he'll be doing abatement work. It's probably going to take about two months by the time we start to finish. <laughs> the yeah. first two or three weeks will be all inside doing abatement work, and they'll be removing materials and stuff that they'll be salvaging. Okay. Good. And when will that start? I mean, obviously, after we He wants a it. key tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. right. So just for purposes of disclosure, there are one, two, three, four, six bids, the highest being two hundred and seventy three thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars. And the lowest being one sixteen. Big big delta. Mm hmm Confident in the work that's gonna be done? Yes, very much. Okay. Yeah, they've been great so far working with them. He's been doing this for a long time. A long time. I okay. know. Yeah. Okay. Tell and me. what do you think the cost is of the other stuff? Are we gonna be well under the budget or the amount that we I want. think so we had associated some money to cover some of the infrastructure work on that the electrical work and so forth um, and we should unless we find something that we don't know is there in the building itself as far as abatement <laughs> we should be well under the 250 Knock on wood. good John? Uh, Kevin have you actually looked at uh, the cost or um, uh, the possibility of using any access to demo the C wing over at the um, Gates Middle School, the old have Gates. Have not, have not at all, because I don't know what's going to be left in separate hat. I, I I'd suggest take a look at it. And I think the board should consider it. The C wing is not going to be useful for anything, and with the old Gates School, um, it's it's slab. It's really of no function. And I know when Tricia was here, that was one of the concerns I raised about using any excess money from the police station to demo it. So I'd really like to know what cost would be to, to demo that section of the wing of the school. Yeah, I th is that wrapped into the new senior center project? Not at all. No? no that's at the, one of the locations, the spots of, of it. Okay. So it's the side, the side, the C wing, which is the slab on the side of the right. That's a lot. But, but to John's point, you could maybe ask Frank to go down and look at it. Yeah. Sure. We can get an idea. Yeah, it's slab idea. on grade there. There's right. the, the attachment to the existing building is not... Well, too exotic yeah. heating electrical all that stuff but save yeah anyway thank you okay Karen did you have any questions nope okay. take a motion uh, move to award a contract to Francesca demolition of Duxbury Mass for the amount of a hundred and sixteen thousand dollars for the demolition of the old police station located at Chief Justice Cushing Highway second Moved by Ms. Canfield, second by Mr. Harris. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 
right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, how's the move going into Gates for Rec? It's it's good. We, we're a little <laughs> slow. We're a little behind schedule. You know, just meeting, you know, things that we need to get done. But um, they, we're using the building. We just don't have Rec in there yet. So what what's the date? Right now we're scheduled actually for next week. I just don't know if we can meet that because we've had trouble getting our flooring contractors in there to do three floors. And also we've had trouble getting the phone equipment um, and the computer thing set up. The phone cutover and equipment cutover is scheduled for next Tuesday, but the physical equipment piece will not be done for another week after that. Uh, we can work around those things, but the biggest challenge is the three floors that aren't done yet. So realistically end of the month February. Um, maybe before maybe before is it a timing with timing thing with the floor it just it, finding the right contractors getting the right prices getting people in there the weather issues this cold snap and then last week's weather definitely affected us um, and just moving things around it's, it's just been a little bit of a challenge what? anything you do yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move back to the first item on the list for 715, even though it is hey, 716. <coughs> That's not too bad. Uh, Mr. Clapp, for a special one-day liquor license for the Winter's Farmer's Market, the new Farmer's Market at St. Luke's. Good evening. Good evening. How are you this evening? Good, thank you. Thanks. Welcome. So you're here to apply for a one-day liquor license. This seems to be a new event that's taking place at um, St. Luke's, and inside, Seven. right? No, for, for the next for the upcoming spring. Uh, that's correct. Yep. Um, the manager of the market, the new market, uh, contacted me. She had some of my product uh, at an other farmers markets and uh, invited me down as a winery okay. to participate. <laughs> Have you ever been at the Citrus Farmers Market during the summer? We have not, no. Uh, I own um, a small company called 1634 Meadery. We actually make honey wine up in Ipswich. And um, this is for, we're trying to extend our business to the South Shore a little, little bit more. So this looks like a good opportunity for us. Absolutely. So what are they doing? Are they having like a farmer's market every Saturday then at St. Louis? It's uh, 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 twice per month uh, for uh, three months, um, so every uh, first Saturday and last Saturday of each month yeah. and so are they using the interior is that kind of like so you have shelter as a part of it that's and correct yep that's correct mm -hmm. so what's happening with, does anybody know what's happening the one that's obviously it's just the summer and seasonal then yeah this just Good. goes January February through April first uh, weekend in April April 7th it's held from 8 30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at St. Louis Church I think it's the first time they've done this I think it's a great idea I was thinking hopefully the organizers might try to co uh, coordinate with the other farmers markets so it could be a year round obviously with shelter indoors I think that would be a great opportunity um, anyway not you but I'm just saying to the uh, <laughs> the organizers that it's a great idea That's what exciting. you're doing. Tony do you have any questions for Mr. Platt? Oh, do, do you have all your licensing and have you done this before <coughs> and how yeah we, uh, we we we've been in business for three years and we um, do lots of farmers markets uh, we've done I think we did six this summer and we've done several winter ones as well so we're fairly fairly experienced at it um, we do give samples small samples it's usually less than a, an ounce or so of uh, wine samples under the uh, farm winery um, laws um, and then uh, we sell bottles of, of the mead yep. you said it's honey wine uh, that's correct yeah mead yep <laughs> fine mead Sean any questions no no you answered them all Karen right you have all your documentation so you'll be you'll card the appropriate people and all of that that's correct all of our servers are tips trained and um, know, know all the, the rules and <laughs> and stuff like that we have never had any issues great Got a motion please I move the board of selectmen approve a one-day liquor license for mr. Dan clap to sell and to conduct wine tasting <coughs> at the South Shore winter farmers and artisans market which takes place the first and last Saturdays of each month starting January 27 2018 April 7th 2018 from 8 30 uh, a.m. to 1 p.m. at st. Luke's Church located at 465 First Parish Road the dates are as follows January 27th 2018 February 3rd 2018 February 24th 2018 March 3rd 2018 March 31st 2018 and of course April 7th 2018 second 
Moved by Mr. Danahy, seconded by Mr. Bengani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye, sir. We're good. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great opportunity. Yeah. Hope to stop by and see it. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is a boarding committee appointment for the Public Building Commission. This is to appoint two council on aging members to the Public Building Commission um, to review um, the entire senior center, senior center process. Um, so we asked Linda Hayes to submit um, to, um, to submit candidates. And so uh, J.D. Miller, who's the chairman, and Linda Hayes have both uh, volunteered to be on it. So I think we just need to a motion to appoint them. If anybody has any other questions? No, I think the two I very qualified the people, the chair and, and the director, so. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Nope. No, no, it's great. No. Nope. Right, so we'll take a motion. There are two separate motions to appoint Linda and John. I move to appoint Linda Hayes, the Council on uh, Aging Director, as the Public Buildings Commission Senior Center user member for a term of three years or until the successor is named. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, second by Ms. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 I further move to appoint John Miller, the Chairman of the Council on Aging, as the Public Buildings Commission Senior Center user member for a term of three years or until a successor is named. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, second by Ms. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda, Chief, Chief Murphy for some fire department contracts. We're going to be reviewing just tonight the power load system <coughs> and stretcher from Stryker for $66,000. Yes. Good evening. Or right, did we skip? The so um, first of all, this came from a grant that was uh, AFG grant, Assistance to Firefighters grant. Uh, Lieutenant Cashman for our, for our department writes most of our grants, so I'm going give to him, give him the credit for executing the grant successfully. Uh, we received $100,000. The striker power loads are basically electronic stretches that go in the back of the ambulance. Part of this is a mandate now to have it for rollover protection. They've had some accidents in the past where the stretches actually came loose. So a new, um, a new law started last July 1st. The rollover protection has to be in anything new, but we wanted to go back and make sure our other ambulances um, have the same protection for our citizens going to the hospital. And also, it's going to reduce um, the electronic part of the stretcher is hopefully going to reduce back injuries. We've had some injuries in the past with firefighters in the backs, some heavy people, so we can actually uh, utilize the stretcher with buttons instead of your legs. So to go up and down, and then also the the um, the component that's in the actual ambulance, you bring this up into the back, you click it in, and it sort of sucks the whole thing in, sucks the thing in. So there's no. Um, it's a, it's a lot more, uh, it's a smoother operation, safer operation. It's a lot more secure for the, uh, for the patients when they go in the hospital. So we found, um, we, we applied for this grant last year. We were successful in getting that. And the other part of the grant that we are not talking about tonight, we'll talk about, it does say, on, is the Lucas machines, which are basically CPR machines mm -hmm. that, that um, do CPR automatically, just exactly what, 110 beats per minute. Um, you just think about 20 to 25 minutes to the hospital a paramedic or firefighter standing up doing CPR in the back of an ambulance when you're taking turns and stops and this and that, it's, it's dangerous, it's, uh, it's very fatiguing, and um, you know, this, this machine, Lucas machines here, we have one now that we keep in the captain's car to have one in town, so if somebody's having a heart attack, but now we'll have three, we'll have two in the ambulances and one in the captain's car in case they're both out of town. We'll still have that um, capability with this tool to, to use. They're so about 13000 a piece. So we'll be back next meeting in two weeks to, uh, to get approval for those, um, along with probably some batteries or, or a warranty extension. But right now it's just for the, the power load stretcher system and the one, uh, the one caught for a total of $66,965.83 to Stryker uh, is the name of the company. Does it include installation, Chief? It does, yes. Yeah, the company that actually built our last ambulance is going to uh, go to install it. They're going to take the old one out of the, the last ambulance, the, the old ambulance we have, renovate that, put a new one in there, and uh, as well as the other ambulance we have now. So there's no loading system now. We have one power stretcher. So now we're going to add one more power stretcher and two loading systems. So both ambulances will have everything they need. So does this include this includes a stretcher as well, right? Correct. One stretcher and two loading systems. Because we did buy Tony bought one new electronic stretcher with the last purchase about a year and a half ago with our last ambulance. So um, now are they mobile? Like, can you get into the woods or can you get someone with this, or is it? 
You know, we probably wouldn't go into the woods with it, but I mean, they're, they're pretty mobile, but you know, you can get do everything you had to do with the other stretches. It's really about, um, you know, the smooth transition up and down, saving your legs, saving your back. Uh, and then when you get to the ambulance, you should actually connect this and it actually loads it all by itself. Yeah. So there's no dropping it, um, any accidental droppings or, and then again, when you go in the hospital, God forbid there was ever an accident, the role of a protection in this is, is really the big deal that's mandated by the state. Does it work fast, John? Because I can imagine, you know, the firefighters can really get a person in an ambulance pretty quick. So does this move? This yeah, the actually the, the strong batteries that go up and down, you know, at a safe speed, but fairly quickly. There's, I don't see any lag time, Sean, with this. But, um, you know, obviously if we can save some back, some injuries and, oh, and, and taxpayer money, as well as, you know, give the patient a better a, a better transition to the hospital, um, it's, it's money well spent. And, and fortunately, we were able to get a grant on this, so um, even better. Great. Any questions, Joe? John, anything? All right. Take a motion. Move to award a contract to Stryker of Portage, uh, Michigan, in the amount of $66,965.83 for the purchase of two power load systems and one Power Pro XT stretcher. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, <coughs> seconded by Ms. Canfield. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Great John. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. See you, Hopefully you're getting some rest. Yeah. <laughs> Next on the agenda is a discussion and vote disclosure of municipal employee. Maura? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. Welcome. Thank you. So, I mean, this is a standard thing that we typically need to do. Um, what is, what's the, um, what service is the employee? So the story is, his name is Tom Edwards. He works also in the voting machines over when, in the voting, um, and he also works for me uh, about four or five hours a week running my pickleball program. So because it's two different departments, um, we disclose and you have to agree to it. Okay. I do the same thing in the summertime uh, <coughs> with the teachers, and the teachers work for me in the summertime for my camps. It's the same type of thing. Yeah. Those are the two, two things: the pickleball and the election worker. And how about the um, also senior, senior worker, worker buy down? Yeah. Okay. For the treasure collector, he um, okay. sends out the yep. stickers, maybe or something. Good documentation on that. Yeah, it's in here. Okay, I didn't see it. I didn't see it's it. It's not next, but it's. Uh, oh, there it is. I apologize. I couldn't see the names. No oh, worries. It was out of yeah. order. We'll take a motion to approve once. Yeah. Oh, here. A motion. Yes, I'll move the board of selectmen um, as required by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 268A. Have reviewed the disclosure form from Thomas B. Edwards, who seeks to provide personal services to the situate recreation. The exemption under Section 20B is approved for Thomas or for the exemption under 20B to be approved for Thomas B. Edwards. Second. Moved by Ms. Danny, second by Mr. Harris. Any additional questions? Nope. <laughs> there being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, 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 Mar. Thank you. Um, they have a good time over there, too, by the way. <laughs> what? They have a good time over there. Playing pickleball? Yeah. <laughs> good. All right, you might as well stay seated because you're next also to talk about the naming of the Old Gates Gym. So this is uh, bringing forth the discussion that we had a couple of weeks ago, I think, before our holiday break. Um, with regards to naming the gym mm -hmm. um, at Gates, and we all uh, discussed naming it as it was originally. Can you ask people to send me an email with their Yeah, comments. did you get anything? Did you get anything? I received one email of someone that is in favor of naming it on the veterans. Somewhere in the gym. Gym, whatever it's And there were a lot of positive comments on Facebook, social media as well that I saw. Oh, good. Because nobody reached out to me, so I didn't no. Yeah, I posted it on my selectman page and and asked for feedback, and I I probably got five or six people, and they all thought that it was a really worthwhile. It was it made sense, and it was a good name. Okay, so it was all positive. It was already that, so just yeah. do it again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why make a big deal about it? Yeah, exactly. So the official name is what the Veterans uh, Memorial Gym. It's up to what your thoughts are. You know, you can have Situate Veterans Memorial Recreational Center, Situate Veterans Memorial Gym. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I was going to leave that up to the board, what they thought would be. It's an awful lot to say, but obviously it's going to be condensed 
to or shortened to something. Mm -hmm. But at least, you know, the official name would be Situate Veterans Memorial. Memorial gym. I think. So. Yeah, I think it should be. I think, I think that's what they named the gym originally, so. And, let's and it's not quite a rec that. center yet, but. And let's call it the gym. That makes sense. So. Any other comments? Sean or Karen? No. Mara, you. It, the difference between a gym and a rec center? That's fine. All, all I'm thinking about are the uh, tennis courts in the field out back for the identification for the GPS. It's the same thing that happened with the gym. They got confused with the, the gates up here. So it was always called the gates field, the gates tennis courts. So once I move in there, I'm sure it will be the rec, yeah, the rec field. And the, yeah, it depends on what I name it. So I'll probably, because I permit them, I'll just call it the rec. Fields or yeah. Oh, you can just put in use Veterans Memorial Gym on your GPS when you when you schedule it. Yeah. I tell you, half of my girls basketball team was late for the game mm -hmm. because they were at the new place instead of the old place. So it does. Get <laughs> oh, did they forfeit? That's all I yeah, care. No, we lost. <laughs> just, since we did win that game, we didn't forfeit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't even on purpose either. <laughs> all right, um, I'll take a motion. I move the board of selectmen vote to name. The former high school and former middle school, otherwise known as the Old Gates Gym, the Situate Veterans Memorial Gymnasium. Second. Move by Mr. Dennehy, second by Mr. Vignani. Any further discussion? There being none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> all right. Okay. You're all set. Thank you. Like One it. question. You said something about a sign yes. last time. Um, yeah. Can you maybe include rec department underneath it or something so they know where we are? I was thinking. And it's up to what everybody else thought. But I think ideally a nice, a, a fairly large sign on the gymnasium wall should be there. But I think we should figure out signage for the rec department independently of that. Or we put it on right. the, the gymnasium. But at least because right now, you know, you got the stone wall, you got the Cudworth Bill house, mm -hmm. you got the barn. Um, it's going to be hard to figure out what's in there if you put a sign there unless it's high enough to be able to see the recreation department. So maybe. Well, they can use wayfinding signs. No, no, but just generally for people, you know. When they go into the building? Yeah, to say where is it. You guys can figure that out, right? Yeah, I think there needs to be a big sign that says recreation. Uh, I've been a couple of places. <laughs> yeah. They, they kind of don't even know where I am sometimes. So I agree. People should know. Yeah. It, it, for both directional but also for identification <coughs> somewhere. I think it makes sense to put it somewhere. There. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Okay. Mara, thank Thanks. you. Yeah, we'll take us out. Thanks. Thanks, Mara. Have a great night. You too. Situ organization department and... Um, the next uh, agenda item for 50 country way sewer requirements has been continued. Oh, really? Right, so we won't be discussing that this evening. We were asked to uh, continue that. The Sheepers, you're moving the salon, Madam right. Chairman. Excuse me? Yes, you're moving the salon. We're almost I done. Told you. I'm like 7.35. This is, we've got to take a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not racing. We're just being. I, I, good. Next on the agenda is a discussion and vote for the Collier Road sewer abatement. That's next. I've got so a lot to say about this. You do. <laughs> <laughs> An hour and a half. Okay. So, um, is anybody coming forward with regards to this one? No, no it's pretty cut and dry. Um, I received this from the assessor who retired, Steve and from the treasurer collective office. Basically, it was two pieces of property that they sold and is now becoming one piece of property and they're putting the house on it. Um, so going forward, the assessor's opinion and the treasurer collector's opinion was that we adjust the remainder of the abatement mm -hmm. for the second sewer connection. So I was a little confused because it used to be two properties. Correct. So when we do an abatement or a betterment, we take all the properties, divide it by the project, and assess that dollar amount. So now, because somebody bought two and they're putting one big house on it, right. we should abate. That was the recommendation of the uh, assessor and the So what my recollection, Lorraine, you might not have been here, is that there was one around the corner on, I want to say Moreland. Yes. Sean, will you, you probably might remember this. Tony, yeah, you probably do too. But there was an abatement issue on Moreland and the street that's perpendicular between Moreland and Collier. But I thought the difference was there were two non-buildable lots, and somehow yes. there was some kind of issue with both being assessed. And we did abate that, I thought. But I'm assuming these were two lots. Is that when they're merging? Mm -hmm. Either. Put it to you this way. If you're going to have a lot, 
I, I assume if it's, I think if it's billable, you get assessed a betterment for it. That's right. That's why it's the stubs there. That's right. Just because they're merging it, they're suggesting that it should be only one, and that's why they're seeking. Is that am I correct? It'll just be one sewer connection. But to, like John said, <clears throat> when the, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a stub for that second lot. Because when they laid the lines, if they came across a four may lot, sure. they put stubs in for for a future buildup. Not like Fifty Country Way, but they right. put they put a stub in. There's already a house there. They've been paying this since 2006. Oh, there was they tear the house down. Yeah, they've been paying this since 2006 through 2017. So they're just looking to abate from 2018 to 2027. But you know, I. I well, I thought it was pretty clean cut before this, but so so in other words, if someone anywhere on town sewer decides to buy the next door neighbor's house, tear it down, we should give them an abatement. That was my question. And they want and they want a lodge. They want to put you know tennis court there or something, whatever. So they have they want to increase the size of their property, like the one I showed you on Gilson Road. They didn't ask. For an abatement, I know for a yeah, fact. I mean, I haven't I mean, done I this in four years, years in but mm. Steve did say it was appropriate to do this. So. But is it fair to the like to Tony's point? Is it fair to the other people that? I was like to believe it wasn't the first time it happened, but I don't know. Yeah, that for sure. I don't. Mara had asked me earlier, and I don't remember. Is there a time constraint on this, Lorraine? Is there a time constraint on this? No, we can look into it further. And yeah. You might want to just to get. I, know, yeah. I want consistency for what we did around the corner, because I mean, if if if, if we've done this before and if there was a justification for it, and they fall into the same category, I have no problems with that. But I wasn't sure if this was two buildable lots that they ended up getting assessed the betterment, and now they merged it, and then they're saying, well, we only want to pay one. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's unfortunately that it doesn't. I don't believe it works that way, in my opinion. But Lorraine just said they tore our house down. Oh, that was. Oh, they did to build they, the other. They tore oh, yeah. the house down. Two houses before, and now it's one. Gotcha. Okay. So there were actually one house on each property. That's what the documentation says. Yeah. Well, then where where is it? Around we? all the way around. That's more. Uh, used to be two houses now. Tuck, one house. Go down Gilson. Right. Tuck back in there. Maybe. I'm just looking it up. I think it's down from where Rick Murray used to live. Or lives. It says, 30, I agree. I think it says 39 bit. Collier. It looks like it's between Michael Ave and Lincoln Ave on the, uh, on the water. water side. Yeah. If there were two houses there before and they both had to pay a betterment, you can't knock one down and say, I don't want to pay oh, a betterment. Oh, you can't. You're right, because they've already been assessed. It shouldn't have been a So that's why they're seeking abatement, because they, that's, yeah, I can't go for that. I'm not doing that. And is the second one where they hooked up to sewer? Both of them? I believe so. I, they, I don't know. That's, that's why they're seeking a, an be abatement, because they, they're not, they're, they're the trying to merge the, the right. it. The, the right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Right. They could have negotiated at the, the PMS. Right. But I, it, the, the only thing that surprised me is Steve, you know, I kind of, Steve's opinion is usually pretty good. So if he thinks it's a no-brainer, then maybe we're missing something. Well, I mean, the point is they've half their usage of the, of that sewer line if they're only, if they removed one house, in theory. I know, but if you, if there were two houses there and they were both hooked up to the sewer before. Right. I don't think you obey one of them. See, I think I'm reading. I'm reading Miss Kelly saying there was a piece of property on Colliery Road that has been created from two parcels. Originally, there were two betterment assessed. Because two parcels are now one, the second betterment needs to be abated by the selectman. The betterment is whatever is the one that should be abated. I guess, and I'm not saying you said there are two houses. Yes, she has it written further down in the uh, documentation. Let me find it. Oh yeah, it used to be two houses, now one. Now You're right. Okay. I don't know what the board wants to do, but I'm not in favor of it. I mean, you got two houses. There's a betterment assessed. You merge them. I have no issues with that. That's an issue that they contractually had to a deal when they were buying the lots or selling the lots. And you know, why should we abate it? Because now there was only one house. That's what the lots were assessed. The betterment. It goes with the land. Now they're merging it. I have no problems with that, but the town should get paid because that's when it was assessed when there were two homes there. Right. 
right, well, why don't we, we wait yeah. till next we'll meeting so meeting. maybe someone yeah, we'll we'll yeah. someone in the assessor's office yeah maybe steve guard or one of those guys know about it all right so we'll just put that off to the next meeting lorraine sure. get a little bit more information on that just so we can make an informed decision okay all right, so moving on to the next item is a discussion and vote for the drain layer license renewals, which is uh, right before the um, abatement information. So we just need to go through and approve the drain, so annual renewal. Suzanne, what's the Well, it's before, um, it's a lot, it was out of order. All right, sorry, I'm still looking at this case. Um, where are we, drain layers? Mm -hmm. Will the yes. Board of Selectmen vote to approve the drain layer license renewal for Laminar Construction DBA Costello Contracting? Second. You can read them separately? Or Whatever you want. Okay, sure. Um, moved by Mr. Harris. I mean, moved by Mr. Vignani. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want me to do them all at once? Does anyone have a... Do you, get do you have to you? abstain from any of them? No. Okay. All right. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the drain layer license renewal for McEachran Contracting? Will the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the drain layer license for Joseph Bonomi? Will the Board of Selectmen vote to um, approve the drain layer license for P.F. Spencer Jr., for E.L. Margetts and Sons, Inc., for Iaria Brothers, Inc., for McDougall Brothers Enterprises, for Ringler Excavating Corp., for Spirito Environmental Services, for Sean Farrell Excavating and for DJ Equipment Construction Company, Inc. Second. Moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Mr. Harris. Any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Tony. Next item on the agenda is an annual declaration for the temporary increase of population that we need to vote to acknowledge for purposes of the ABCC. Um, and we are projecting the population to rise to 28,500 for 2018. How do we get that? I don't know. <laughs> so do why don't we say 38,000? How about that? Make, Does that, that mean we get... We, use, we yeah. use the same yeah. estimate for the last four years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to Kathy Karen about it every year to see if she anticipates any rise in the population in the community, and she does not. Oh, on Heritage Days, I think it goes up about <laughs> 10,000, 15,000. Yeah, 64,000. Just question. So we don't we don't verify that number at all. Huh. Well, there's really no way to verify it. Huh. Put a toll booth. You have a head count. A few few toll booths and figure who's got stickers we'll go down or something. July third and count. from Norwell coming down. Exactly. Yeah, those Norwell people. Don't let me. I got a Marshfield. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, motion. Move board selectmen <laughs> approve the 2018 seasonal population estimate. As of July 10th, 2018, our resident population estimate is 28,500. Second. Move by Mr. Vignati, second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is a discussion and vote for a one day liquor license for the silent chef who's holding an event at the Mountain Bank um, this week on the 11th from 5.30 to 7.30 on Front Street. I think this is a renovation at Mountain Bank, but mm -hmm. um, they're having a little celebration and a reopening. On a motion? Oh, yes. sorry. All right, yes. I'll move the Board of Selectmen to approve a one-day wine and malt license at Mountain One Bank, located at 54 Front Street, for the following event. Silent Chef on Thursday, January 11th, from 2018, from 5.30 p.m. until 7.30 p.m. Second. Move by Mr. Denny. He's second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I apologize. I missed the uh, memorial bench donations. There's so little on this agenda that they're all, it's all squished up. <laughs> um, so we've had many uh, memorial benches donated this year. This seems to be the longest list that I've seen. Um, well, part of this is the uh, five benches that will be uh, installed out at Situate Lighthouse. Okay. For the CPC project. Okay. But we have happen to have five donations alongside the CPC project for the trash receptacles and the benches and see that point. So those benches will be installed. They're supposed to be installed in the summer. They're still on order. They're not in yet. But um, everybody's paid for them. We've deposited the money. And we want to send them their tax letter uh, for their donations. So I want to get those out right away. So okay. we put them on there all together. Okay. 
Terrific. Um, any questions? Nope, it's great. Okay. The it's town, nice. Thank you. town takes care of them, pays for the in, uh, installation, and it's a nice green branch. Yeah, they're all the same. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, yeah. But they're all the same. They're granite and yeah. so forth. You can describe what you want on it. At the lighthouse Are they granite at the lighthouse, too? The wood there. Oh, right? they're so wood? They're more comfortable. That's right. oh, what's there now. Oh. But these five are, aren't those. These aren't the lighthouse ones. A lot of these are the lighthouse benches, yes. But my point is, is we're consistent in what we do. The town, the, they put the same type of benches either. I thought it was operating. At the lighthouse, because so many people, it was a legacy project that was approved in town meeting. Uh, because so many people enjoy sitting out there, the, the gray benches are really not very comfortable. Yeah. So no the decision backs. was made to do beautiful wooden benches. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So just one well, question about the, yeah, one question about the wooden ones. So are the are there gonna be plaques on them? So yes, there will be. Yeah. So if some reason that those are damaged they can just replace the plaques. The tower I mean they can repla replace them. Problem is sometimes people go around stealing things like, you know, when you see the milestones for like Boston, 20 miles, yeah. and Plymouth, they had the Plymouth seal, and people have gone around and plucked them right out of the uh, granite. So I'm not saying they shouldn't, but every so often you find. Remember somebody down at um, North Situate at the train station, they're pulling down the copper. Um, on the canopy. On the canopy, the canopy on the canopy. So I, that's why I say you never know. Yeah, these are personalized plaques with the families. Right. Give to the town situate in memory of the person's name with a saying that they choose. Uh, it'll be drilled into the, the bench. It'll be yep. flat against it so it doesn't catch people's clothes and things like that. Okay. We've never had a problem. <laughs> Not on wood. The granite benches are engraved, so no, unless they steal the whole bench, we've never had a problem with that either. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank so you. So why don't I why don't I thank those that have donated mm -hmm. uh, before we have a motion? So to thank uh, Elizabeth Marin in Fox Butterfield, Mark Chase, Kevin Malloy, Matthew Tice, Sandra Kingsland, Clem Barstow, and Robert Hebert. So thank you very much for your donations. Um, then I'll take a motion. Are those the ones who donated, or the ones that are in memory of? The ones no. who donated. The donated. Okay. Good. Yeah. Nice. Move to accept. Uh, 2017 memorial bench donations to the town of Situate that total eighteen thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Second. Moved by Mr. Danahy, second by Mr. Vignani. Any further questions? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 And thank you, thank you. very much. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice project and nice way to commemorate those that have gone. All right. Um, so next is correspondence. Clerk All right. Danahy. I just want to say that there is a, um, for, to all the town employees, there's a Steve Jambowski's retirement celebration, which is going to be held January 10th, 6 p.m. at the Barker Tavern. Uh, it's a dinner, and if anybody's interested, um, please um, feel free to um, contact the assessor's office um, to, to be able to attend. Um, other than that, that's it. Yep. There's one more. Oh, there are. All right. 2018 winter film f uh, oh this actually is really good I wish we could put this on TV I don't know if we can we should can maybe we, we can get Facebook? it on uh, Facebook but also put it on TV for the loop all right 2018 winter foreign film series sponsored by the sister situate um, or situate sister uh, city project it's gonna be held at the st. Mary's Nativity Parish Center January 18th at 6 p.m. there's the movie the untouchables um, intouchables I take that back January 20th Le Ballon Rouge the red balloon Many people probably remember it as kids. I think mm -hmm. I remember it in elementary school. Kid running up and down the streets of Paris or one of the Don't cities. Keep it away. I think I saw Chasing a balloon. Yeah. It's, it's, it's heart wrenching. Uh, Song of the Sea, a 2014 animated fantasy drama about a 10 year old Irish boy and his uh, mute sister. So, this is both, I guess it must be both French and Irish uh, film festival. Well, we have two sister cities now. That's right. And then we have February 1st, Waking Ned Divine. Actually, it's a 1988. It is a great comedy. Yeah, Highly recommend it. Don't say anything other than it's an Irish film. You, you'll like it. Uh, February 15th, 6 p.m., Le Grand Vadrulli. I'm terrible at French, but it's a World War II classic. So, I'll leave it at that. 1966. And then February 22nd, Washington's birthday. Uh, Some Mother's Son, another 1986 uh, Irish film about the friendship between two mothers 
and some IRA sons who are in prison. Uh, there's a suggested donation of $10. Again, if you're interested, contact, um, actually contact, I guess you could say Slackman's office, we'll have it, we'll get it on the Facebook page. And it's already on, there you go, go to our face page. Um, finally, what do we have here? Um, a letter from a resident. Uh, is this it? Yep. Um, we received a phone call from a resident, Mr. Charlie Sullivan, who wanted to say thank you for a job well done on the roads. He said, uh, Vernon Road has never looked better. He wanted to wanted me to pass along his gratitude. And so he wanted to do that. Very nice. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for correspondence, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, we just have approval of meeting minutes for um, the meeting of December 19th. If anybody wants to make any motion? <coughs> Move to Is accept the, um, what are you doing? I'm reading your thing. <laughs> Move to accept the meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen <laughs> meeting held on December 19th, 2017. Second. <laughs> Move, by <laughs> <laughs> Move by Mr. Denny, he's second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Separate those Does anybody have together. any comments before we move to adjourn and sign documents? Uh, I do, actually. Um, I probably, I'm sorry, I'm a little late. Um, <coughs> car difficulties. And then I get into my son's car and there's no gas, so that's why I had to run to get gas. <laughs> that's good to do that's what happens with a high school kid. Um, town did a great job. I'm sure you guys covered it. Jim, I'm sure you covered it. I feel bad that, you know, two days into your <laughs> tenure and you're dealing with uh, an urgent situation. But you did a great job. The town... I want to say DPW did a phenomenal job out there. First responders, police and fire. I had received a number of comments from people in Sand Hills saying what a great job was done. People on uh, the merchants said the same, and I just wanted to convey that, and I just wanted to at least share that. I'm sure my fellow board members did the same, and it was said earlier. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, um, Jeff, I think it's Murtry. Do you, do you know him, Sean? Mutry. 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 Now, Jeff is one of these, un, shall we say, um, how do I put this? Unsung, Unsung hero of town. And I say that because you see him around town, he does different things. What did Jeff do? Well, when you go down Front Street and you see all the lights on during the holidays, Jeff went out with a ladder and put up all the lights up and down Front Street so that when they went on, that it could be, you know, a celebration for the holidays. And Jeff has done it not just this year, he's done it before, put up the signs you know, to make sure when the storms happen, he's the one that goes up the you'll see him with a ladder. And I have to tell you, you know, um, he worked really hard. Now, some of the lights weren't on, and that's not his fault because the lights worked. It just determined, de depended on whether or not the various, merchants. shall we say, merchants who were the store shopkeepers wanted to pay to put them on, but he put them all up nonetheless. And I actually, I ran into him after the storm, and he's now <laughs> using a, um, a, a bobcat to help the storm, to get the sand off the streets. But he said, I gotta go take a look at the lights. He said that to me this morning. And I thought to myself, I'm meaning to say, here's one guy, like many people, men and women in town, who do things that people don't realize to make this town better. And I just wanna say that people, sh if you know Jeff, you should say thank you. Because what he does, he doesn't, people don't notice it. And I just wanna shout out to him. And for those people, if you hear this, you see him next time, Sand Hills General Store, say, Jeff, thanks for what you did. It's, it's appreciated, so. Just want to shout that out. I really appreciate it. I've been meaning to say this for the past three meetings, two meetings, and I keep forgetting it, but today I saw him and I said, I'm, especially when he said, I gotta go out, gotta get in the bobcat, get the sand off, I'm like, there he goes. And he actually has a business, he's a mason, so I'll toot his horn for him, so Very good nice. for him. Thank you. That's it. Tony? No, I'm, I'm good, other than go to your local sport events. <laughs> Volleyball, <laughs> basketball, wrestling. Sean? I'm all set. Uh, just really uh, quickly, the January 2018 library schedule is out. It's on the website for the library. It's at the, and there are so many programs available. Um, and one I just wanted to highlight is the homework power hour for our middle school students. Um, there's a schedule on the site that you can drop in and get support from high school students or work with your peers. And I think that's a really great thing that is now that we have a, a teen center at the library that, that is a resource for people.
Can I ask you, Karen, something on that front? Sure. Um, the sister city, in particular the, um, the um, Irish Twinning uh, Committee, had mentioned that they're trying to, different people have a collection of large, or, or not large, but a collection of Irish books, and they'd like to maybe designate that or, or dedicate it or, you know, donate it, if you will, to the library. And I'm like, is that something that we can have a section just for, you know, whether it's the, the, the Sister City France, but in particular the Irish section, because I know a lot of people have a lot of books. I would, um, that's a question for our library director, Jesse Finney, okay. um, to see if she has the capacity to accommodate that, depending on how many volumes there are. But I don't think it's like volumes, but I know that people were saying they're downsizing and they have a, a collection yeah, of books. So like any donations of books to the library, they get assessed by the librarian, and if they can't be used in the collection, if they're not something that they think would be you know, lendable, will go to the Friends of Situate Library, and they actually get sold, and the proceeds benefit the library. Okay. I don't think they want them sold. I think they want them used Right. No, that would be a question for Jesse. Just saying it's yeah. something they I'm could probably get that answer before, though. What's that? Yeah. They get the answer before yeah. they hand them over. Yeah. I think yeah. Call the right. library director and then I'll and tell she'll them definitely No. All right. I don't have anything to add. I know uh, we'll be recognizing uh, Stephen Hill at the next meeting, just so folks don't think that we're remiss on that. Very grateful for that. Um, and just the team did a great job. So certainly have a great team in Situate. So thank you. That's it. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to so adjourn and sign documents. Second. Moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night, folks. Thank you. Jim's going to think.